Welcome to the 2016 NRM Science Conference. Um, my name is Sandy Carruthers. I'm the Director of Science in the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources, or GINA, um, and I'll be chairing this morning's session. Um, so I would like to acknowledge that, that, that we meet on the traditional land of the Ghana people today, and I pay my respects to Elders past and present. Um, I, I just, um, it's, it's probably not everyone is, is here yet because it's so early, but just to let you know, we have something like 94 talks this morning um, for the rest of the day after this morning's session, and they're in five concurrent sessions. So we'd really appreciate if you could, um, we want people to be able to move between talks and see all the talks that you want. But if after the breaks, if you could um, make your way to the lecture theatre that, that you're going to first, a couple of minutes before that starts, so we can, we can make sure that we start the chair, the chair sessions on time. So if, after morning tea, we'll be starting everything on time. Um, so I really appreciate your assistance with that. All right, so um, what, what I'd like to do now, um, is um, ask the Honourable Ian Hunter, Minister for um, Sustainability, Conservation and Environment, to give us the opening address. Thanks, Minister. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, good morning, everyone. I understand that Uncle Lewis and uh, the singing and dancing group will be with us shortly to do a welcome to country. So I, too, will just acknowledge that the land we meet on for this conference uh, is the traditional land of the Ghana people and that we pay our collective respects to their spiritual and ongoing relationship to country. And I know not everybody's here yet. I know my chief executive, Sandy Pitcher, will be queued up at the coffee stall somewhere trying to get a double shot flat white to get it through the morning. And I'm sure there are many other attendees who are doing exactly the same thing. But it's been my great pleasure to be here with you this morning and, uh, and be your warm-up act. The theme of the conference is sharing knowledge for better outcomes. Um, and I hope that you take advantage of the opportunities to strengthen ties, form new connections here today, discussing new ways that you can collaborate across your sectors with other researchers in the field, and the, of course the decision makers will be here too, uh, who act on the, the research that you work on and the information that you offer up to us. This conference is uh, relatively unique, I understand, in this country because it integrates a huge array of natural resource management science themes, including climate change, water, soils, biodiversity conservation, biosecurity, coast, uh, Aboriginal knowledge, and uh, trying to incorporate all of those different threads into natural resource management decision making. I'm really pleased that the conference has grown, and this is the second conference I understand, and it's uh, almost doubled in size in the space of 12 months. And I think that's an uh, indication of the huge success of this sort of organisational get together brings about. But also I think it's an indication of the growing interest in this area of natural resource management from very many different angles. Um, I think there's about a thousand registrations for the conference, um, this conference, which is incredible, and I don't know how you're going to manage to get them all into the different sessions in any sort of orderly fashion, uh, but I hope you do. I'd like to sincerely, of course, thank the University of Adelaide for its very generous support of the conference, as well as the staff from the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources the NRM Research and Innovation Network, uh, all of them are very important for organising of this conference. Your support and the enthusiasm for this event, I think, is, again, uh, a very strong indication of the level of support in the community, um, in this state at least, and probably across the country, in NRM science. And it's really, I think, vital because NRM science directly touches the lives of each and every South Australian, uh, whether they know it or not. Our natural systems provide us with everything that we need to survive, our food, our water, our textiles, but they also support industries and communities directly, as well as maintaining our quality of life. And managing these systems well and in an integrated fashion is absolutely essential if it's going to be sustainable into the future, particularly in the light of uh, global warming and the challenges that global warming will throw up to our economy. We need absolute excellence in science and research to support strong policy if we're going to rise to these challenges. But it's no point doing the science, uh, informing strong policy if decision makers don't actually uh, pay due respect to the scientists who are doing the work and who uh, accept that science is not perfect, but it's the best way of uh, arriving at answers for immediate problems that we've ever, ever had. And uh, I think it um, woe betides us if we as a community and as a government start to question 
the fundamental basis of science for our decision making. Evidence based um, decision making is the only rational approach for a government, I believe. And when you depart from that, you're making bad decisions for the environment, bad decisions for your community, fundamentally bad economic decisions, because the decisions you're making are always going to be short term and always going to leave you with lot bigger long term problems. So for me, Decision making, policy making has to be based on evidence and that evidence has to be rigorous. Now we have, I think, um, some very successful examples of strong partnerships between government and research institutions in this state and also with industry. We already have some very ex successful examples of this. Um, Goiter Research, uh, Goiter Institute, I should say, jumps to mind immediately. It's a partnership between our state government, the CSIRO, and our three state universities. Gorda's research supports and informs our water policy and management with high quality independent science and it was fundamental to our battle with the Eastern States and the Commonwealth Government over the River Murray only um, a few short years ago. Good science must be driven by key knowledge gaps. Uh, that's good science to be applicable to our policy making, I'm not um, referring to basic science there. And the best way of identifying these is through collaboration and the willingness, I think, to share our data, our information. Through the South Australian Government's declaration of open data, we are ensuring, ensuring that a wide range of data is open and freely accessible to all. Uh, we manage the Enviro Data SA, the Atlas of Living Australia. And two years ago, at the very first NRM Science Conference, I launched the SA Climate Ready, the most comprehensive set of climate projections available in South Australia. Sharing data, science uh, and knowledge creates opportunities and helps us plan for the future. It supports collaboration between private and public sectors and encourages informed participation by our citizenry. The future of natural resource management in Australia depends on a smarter and a more collaborative approach to science and research and I'd like to encourage you to explore <coughs> unexpected uses of your data and to contribute your data to our open databases for purposes unknown uh, and for which um, they may not be investigated during your academic career but could be fundamental to solving problems uh, down the track. And I think um, that mystery of discovery is what is fundamentally a driver for people who work in science and I'd like to leave you with a, a quote which most of you will probably recognise and those who don't can Google it. Uh, the important thing is not to start to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. One cannot help but be in awe when he contemplates the mysteries of eternity, of life, and of the marvellous structure of reality. And it is enough if one tries merely to comprehend a little of this mystery every single day. I'm off to Parliament now to comprehend a much bigger mystery, uh, how Parliament can promote um, quality of life for South Australia, and I'll do my little bit my tiny little bit to try and comprehend a little bit of that mystery today as I go through question time. But can I thank you for your work, your dedication to this very important work of collaborating across many, many spheres of science and natural resource management. I hope that you'll have a successful and productive day and I hope uh, the connections that you make, the networking you do, will help you in further driving collaboration across this very important area of NRM science. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Minister. Thank you for your support. It's great to have you here and it's great to hear um, such supportive words for, for what we're trying to do. Um, so I'm just... Are we ready? Okay. So I think... Sorry. All right, so I'm um, really pleased now to introduce um, Carl Telfer, who will do Welcome to Country, and the Patriot Dance Group, who are going to do a um, Aboriginal welcome ceremony for us. And there will, there will be some smoke, but we have organised for um, everything to be okay, so you can just relax and enjoy.
generations of my ancestors. Special place this one. Right near Thunderpay, the Kangaroo River, the Men's River. Where we sit here now, this is Men's Place. Also Women's Place. Different time of year. This is where the limestone used to be. The wall and the rock, which is important in our ceremony. Education, I guess, and knowledge passed on through law. Funny now, everyone's sitting up here looking around the same way. But where are we inside of this? Language on a door. Maybe on a wall. Maybe in an artistic piece. But through our blood and our knowledge and our connection to country, and I speak on behalf of my own clan, or my own band, clan, and tribe is the knowledge that I bring of culture. Not to entertain you, although we have to do that just to get a laugh. <laughs> and it lightens up uh, the seriousness of where we're all heading, as well as we know. And I see the circle, and I wonder what you all learned from the last cycle, and what you're going to be sharing with each other on this journey here today. So uh, before I use this one here to bring on my, uh, I guess, Yelaka, what we are now. Yelaka means old wisdom, new way. It's our story. So I've um, been saying that and using this one here. Protocol. Paying respect to young, young people. Plans that are, I guess I'll, I've, I've been adopted into, but also for permission for this one. And the Yerika is one of them. The Yerika and the Dora and Moiti. And I got connection with the Yerika tribe. And I say, um, Yongo Yerika my Makjo. Young Tengu which is uh, the family group, and pay respect to this one here. That's why I'm playing and sharing now. Because I've, this is science right here. So I'm just going to share this now and bring the young fellas out, or the next generation out, to share. Ma? Ma! What's the ma? Of high degree. We're sharing 
technology keys. Science, story, country, culture, totem, belonging, ways of understanding. I'd just like to introduce my nephew here, Tana Tari Martin, who carries the totem in the spirit of the Indian. And my sister here too, Janelle Saunders, from the Wurrungal people, who's been here in our country in the same way. We're coming together to our story. So the first thing we'd like to do is, I guess, um, is a greeting to Spirit of Place. And yes, you know, we use the Yuraki because that's all we had. And as we're getting stronger and stronger, we're coming back to the songs and the stories that are still living in the land. So this one here is just a dance of greeting. Good one. Ma! Watch ma! <laughs> I have to look for more degrees there in that, eh? Always the policy. Because we're still suffering from those degrees. The degrees of separation. Dislocation. So we need our space to come home. Not just a name on the wall or a park. But no, we are Yaka. Our country. Our place. This one here talks about that now, the law. Another one, our connection. This is a story now. Great ancestor, people fighting over water a long time ago. Before the water was out here in the Gulf. What they call St. Vincent. Very important man. Huh? I don't know. We've got Mount Lofty and Mount Bonaison up there. Important follow there. All the streets we got around Adelaide named after important men. Men? What about women? No dumb, see? Tipping point, dumb. We know. They hold the story. The water of life. Biology? Ecology? Can't be here without. So this one here talks about kind of the union. Running over to a place, York Peninsula over there, Ajadura country, my other ancestral country over there, to my nana side, Mother Mother Mai, which means dry food country over there. And um, this is a song about the Emu, long time ago running across. Because they were separated because they were fighting, all the animals were fighting, you know, half human and half animal, before they were split, before the Gulf was there. Long time ago. I don't know what sort of period we call it, the Pleiocene or something like that, there. I don't know. Okay. So this one here talks about this one. 
the story of Christ. will be used to make a corridor so we can travel. Not just us, but all the animals as well. Like I said, they're our totem. But when we go out here and we see this river, we're very sad. We all should be sad. Because that's the reason why eternal life put Adelaide here. But when you look at that river now, it doesn't look very nice. I'm sure between everybody here and the intelligence that we have here combined, we can work our way to start reversing the cycle that is there. So we're building all these buildings to look over that beautiful river. But you go down to the edge and it's green. And there's crap everywhere. Is that a good sign? environment was in there with planning, but now it's been separated. And we can see the results everywhere all over the place. So we've got this one here, and we're going to make this fire here. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. Pull it out to the ancestors.
Carl, sorry. Carl. Sorry. Um, we'd just like to say, say thank you very much. That, that was fantastic. Thank you, for, thank you for sharing and thank you for the invitation to join together with you and, and think about how we do things um, in science and with, with your culture. So thank you so much. And we've got a, we've got a gift for you. So oh, you probably can't. can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So thank you. Can we thank, thank the dance troupe again, please? So, um, so n next up we have um, uh, Sandy Pitcher, Chief Executive of the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources. Welcome, Sandy. Yeah, sure. 
Well, good morning, everyone, um, and thank you for having me here. I just want to um, pay my respect to Carl and his family for the welcome that we've just had, or I think as Carl described it, it's much more of a welcome. It was an invitation and a, a thought-provoking um, opportunity, and I do think we're all very privileged to um, have had that experience. So you're going to feel less privileged to hear from me, I'm afraid, but that's what happens when you get to follow something as profound as what Carl has just done. But I am going to be welcoming, and the thing that I really want to impart today is, is a welcome to all of you f um, to be here, and I suppose an invitation um, from the department, um, so on behalf of the department... Uh, is that the fire alarm and the um, <laughs> air conditioning all coming on at once? <laughs> It really might be the rain conference in a second. <laughs> um, and I do want to, um, to I suppose, b begin with some welcoming and early um, remarks. And the first, I suppose, is to reflect on some of the thank yous and the partnerships that's brought us here today. And we're here at the Adelaide University, and I think it's really important to, to pay our thank yous to the Adelaide University for... Um, letting us uh, or giving being part of the conference planning and, and with Bob and the team but actually just letting us have the Bragg Theatre and all of the different facilities that we're going to be using over the university over the next couple of days it is no mean feat to fit this many people together and I think that um, if we didn't have that generosity of the university we wouldn't be able to do that so I'm very grateful for that I'm also grateful for how many of our minds I think have been educated in this institution um, mine amongst others I know many of us are graduates of this university and it's um, for me always a a weird kind of reminiscing to be back in, in this lecture theatre and others. So um, thank you first to the university and thank you um, for the team who've been organising and reflecting that this is our second year as a conference. I think there's going to be some of you who weren't here last year who'll be experiencing it for the first time, but many of you who were here last year and have become repeat customers. You've come back and you've, you've obviously got things from last year and you're, you're coming back today. And I think Carl reflected on that too. What have we learnt in the last year? What, what more is there to learn and what other opportunities will today bring? So well done to all of that. And I don't know if it, you all realise, but there's a thousand registrations for the conference over the three days. So um, you're going to be sharing a lot of ideas with a lot of people over the coming days. And I think that's, that's quite a testament to, to the program that the team's put together. I also think it says something about us as South Australia. There, this focus of the conference is about us as a state and, and it is proudly many of us from South Australia sharing our ideas. And I think that it is um, reflective of what we want to do. We want to um, have that expanding evidence base. We want to make sure that as, as much as we can, evidence and science are a part of our NRM decision making. And we also want to be very proud of that. And I, I know the Minister talked on that theme earlier this morning. So we need to continue that science is part of not just our state debate, but our national debate. And I think we as a state um, punch above our weight in that place and we want to keep doing so. So I referred to NRM Rain before, and this conference is convened by the South Australian Natural Resource Management Research and Innovation Network. So that's where the RAIN part has come from. And I've been lucky enough to be chair of this network in, in the last year. And there's nothing like riding on the coattails of good work. So as chair, I can say what I have had the blessing of is just the most dedicated, committed team who have just been really focused on how not only to bring this conference together but also to bring thought leadership throughout the year because this isn't a once a year thing. You would all be probably signatories to our email list, to other different opportunities where you're hearing and getting to share ideas and it is very much part of a network that, that you're all part of and that RAIN is. And it's been around since 2011, so some of you might have touched the RAIN network in various different ways over that time. And I do want to acknowledge how important it's been, not just for us as a department in Juna, but hopefully for many of you from all the different parts and organisation that you've come from, because there are so many opportunities to bring things together that, that RAIN is focused on. So we work hard on making sure that network works and we, we're always interested in hearing about other and different ways we can do it. But I think that um, the number of registrations and the focus of this conference means we're getting, we're getting something right about that and we're keen to keep building and building. 
So you're going to hear over the next three days the latest in scientific research techniques and tools. You're going to hear from government scientists, you're going to hear from, from people from a whole range of different research partners and hopefully you'll be able to build networks and opportunities not just in the sessions but in, the, in those gaps in between the conversations that sometimes is where the, the richness really continues. I also want to take the chance to thank in advance um, Professor Emma Johnson for coming and being our keynote speaker today. Um, I'm really thrilled that she can be here. I'm thrilled actually to have so many women on the program because as many of you would appreciate, science hasn't always been filled with women on the official program. I think we can attest that science has been filled with women but it hasn't actually been always that the leadership conversations have been from women and it's one thing that our network has been focused on ensuring that lots of voices and the diversity of voices are part of this conference and a part of our network so I'm really grateful to all of you who participated in that way and particularly that Professor Emma Johnson has been able to come and I, I hope and many of you will hear her biography in um, greater detail but um, she was the winner of the inaugural Australian Academy of Science Nancy Willis Medal for Women in Science in 2014 so I think it is particularly fitting that she's able to be here today. And what Emma does, and, and I know I'm speaking, preaching to the choir here, but Emma does such a fantastic job, I think, of increasing the representation of Australia's female leaders in science in the media, which is a tough place to be. And I say this having just come of a very um, challenging conversation with Ian Henschke yesterday, um, who's a local media um, ABC. So I always think that people like you, Emma, who managed to actually bring science and the media and people together is a, is a particular talent of which I'm very envious. And it's very important. I think it's important for the thought leadership and it's important for increasing, I think, the conversation about science and with science in our community. And using things like Q&A and the National Press Club catalysts and social media, these are all places where we need science and conversations about science to be held. And the longer and the more that it's, it's locked up and, and we can't get people to participate, I think the worse um, our national debate will become. So I think it's so important on so many levels and I think that we've got many people in this room today who are part of the effort of taking science out of the halls and into the community and it's, and it's a laudable aim. And we know that NRM science is important and affects all South Australians. I mean, that's the core of what we're trying to say. This is something for everyone. It's not something that you can shut, shut your mind and your eyes to. But I think it's actually how we communicate that to people and how we get them to understand why it is and needs to be important to them that will be the strength of the value of conferences like this and ongoing conversation. So I want to just reflect quickly, and this is... Um, almost I suppose as a teaser for what's about to come but on the the importance of research partnerships and and of the public value of these partnerships so what we're going to see over the next couple of days is a whole lot of opportunities where research has come together where people have come from their different institutions with their different information and have brought that together in in various different forms and and various different um, scientific research endeavors and while we have the success of university science and research and this is I think you know often measured in measures of excellence in government we are also looking at the public value of of all of the things that we do whether it be the environment the economy and the social and actually trying to think of the public value of the work we do and the premiers recently called on government researchers industry sectors all of the partners that we have here today to think about how we can work better in the interests of South Australia to help us prepare our state in, in different ways to help prosper in the global economy and to ensure our work has real impact. And this is something that June has really focused on as a department. We spend a lot of our resources, our time, our emotional energy engaging with different partners and researchers and the industry and the community. Nothing for us is just within the walls of our department. In fact, we're always really aware of the reason, the purpose for our department, the purpose for our work and putting people, the environment at the centre of that and asking those questions with that basis. And I think um, that evidence base, thinking about NRM in that way and, and the purpose of 
what we need to protect and why we need to protect it is a really important part of how we make decisions. So the evidence base is integral for us and we talk about it, we bandy it around, but we know that um, sometimes you have to be the custodians of an evidence base and I do think there's an important role for us to think about as scientists and as public servants, for those of you who are, about what it is that we're protecting and what role we play in that decision making. And that might be something that, that is a sub-theme of some of the conversations that you have over the coming days. So our science and our research translates and we need to translate it to have tangible benefits for South Australia. And working together, I think, gets us to better places and it gets us there faster. So public value really matters and the real world impacts matter for us. So what does the science and research in this room, in the sessions that we're about to have, what does it do for South Australia? How does your work and the work of your partners and your colleagues have real world impact? And how could perhaps partnering in different ways or with new people change or build on that impact that you're already having? These are some of the questions I think uh, that will be great if they're um, pulsing around the room in the coming days. So I've, I've put on the table, I suppose, that Juna has a history of partnering and it's something that we're proud of. It's something that we've done I think really well over the last 10 years and it's easy to say that when you're new and you can look back over what other people have done and, and really see, see that transformation of being a, a government department that's doing its own research to partnering in really different ways and I think um, there's actually the final keynote on the third day will actually explore the different drivers of the NRM research and I think hopefully that will bring together all of those themes and partnering will be a very important part of that. And that um, that keynote is going to be given jointly or delivered in partnership um, by Professor Bob Hill, who's the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Sciences here at the University of Adelaide, and Sandy Carruthers, who's the Director of Science and Junior, and you've already seen Sandy um, up here today. And their talk is going to be titled Strange Bedfellows, Dating Rules for Research Partnerships, which I think is adding a bit of sexy to the topic. Um, <laughs> Did either of you write the name of that topic is what I want to know. <laughs> or is that something we landed on you as a collective? <laughs> and um, so I hope that you all get to enjoy that. And actually I think I wanted to give you that as a teaser of knowing what's coming because I think that's one of the themes that will come through today. But I think just the, the actual um, preparation for, for two of our partners, for, for Juna and, and, and for Bob with, from the Adelaide University to actually be able to jointly present a keynote, I hope demonstrates to you just by knowing that that's, that's been what our planning is, where we see partnerships and how important they are and what it, what it means in a conference like today. So I'm, I'm conscious that the real scientists will be getting up soon and I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I, I do, while I have the microphone, want to take the opportunity to just touch quickly, and I know we'll hear more about the Goida Institute, but to just touch quickly on the partnership of the Goida Institute, because it is something that we're particularly proud of as a state government, and, it, and we're proud of what it's managed to do, and I think what the potential is for other partnerships in, in thinking about why we have them and what they achieve. So Goida Institute, it began as a sizable joint investment, so it was 50 million over the last five years, um, and it's over 8 million over the next four years, so there's been a great deal of, of investment between research institutes and the state government. And I think this partnership, what Goida Institute embodies, is what we can achieve together to tackle the important issues affecting our state. And I think the success of what the Goida Institute managed to do in its first term was a reflection of the state government actually continuing this co-investment for the second term. And that's a tough thing in government, to get reinvestment in, in things like Goida Institute. I can tell you it, it just doesn't come, come easily in, in tight times. But I think there was a clear commitment, certainly from the Premier and the Minister and the Cabinet, right through to the, all of the partners, that we are achieving some great things here and it's not something that many other states have been able to, to have in, in their places. We recognise what's been really special about it and it really is a clear message of support, I think, from the government and from the partners about thinking about science 
and the demand and the drive for science and, and investment in science in these tight times. So I hope that that's something that um, comes up and thinking about those kind of partnerships over, over the next couple of days. Finally, I just want to reflect on something too that's been quite close to, to my heart in my time with Juna and, and in, prior, in previous roles, and that is the talking about the link between the environment and health. And I say talking about because I don't want to um, present any sense that this is a new discovery for anyone, but I don't think it's been part of the conversation that we've always done as government. We've been very siloed about the way we talk about the environment and the way we talk about health in many of our policy outcomes. But intuitively, I don't think that's the way people in who've worked in these sectors have felt about it, but certainly I think sometimes the public discourse has been very siloed. And what we're trying to do, and we've, we've signed an MOU, which is something governments like to do, between Junior and Department of Health and got a number of other partners around the table, is thinking about how we change not only some of our research efforts, but some of the community conversation about what health and environment can look like together and what some of the, the learnings are for all of the sectors and what we can actually, I suppose, how we can shift the dial on some of our behaviours and decisions. So the premise, a clean environment's essential for human health and wellbeing is, um, is no surprise. And knowing that we've got patches of evidence around um, the natural environment actually in helping improve health and well-being, preventing disease and recover from illness is also something that's not new. But it's not something that we think is being spoken about and, and taken into public policy decision making in the way we'd like it to do. So we're trying to, to capitalise on that. We're trying to think differently about how we talk about it. We're thinking about what do we have as an agency that we can bring to that conversation and maybe change the way people operate. And, and one of those clear things for us is parks, particularly our national parks. We've got a huge network of parks in our state. And how can changing the way people interact with our parks and be part of it actually help improve the life, the health outcomes of our state and the people who live in our state? And um, I think what will be interesting out of this partnership in a, in a new form that we're doing is that we're hoping again with that lens of what is the public value, how can we change some of the conversation, what research gaps do we have that we need to fill and what better understanding can we promote both in the community and within the policy makers in, in lots of spheres about what we can do differently. And we're really interested in how NRM science can help us manage these challenges and how we can think about parks differently. So I think that's another exciting part of our partnership. Um, I'm going to zoom through a couple of other parts of partnerships because there are going to be people speaking about these in much greater detail. But I did also want to touch on the no species lost focus that, that Juna's science team and a whole lot of our different policy makers have been focused on. And we're actually doing a collaboration here to try and think about what we do next. So we have a biodiversity strategy that's called No Species Lost and that's um, got an end year on it in one sense of 2017. Not that we want to end the effort there but that's the end of that phase of our focus. And what we've been doing is starting now, starting back in 2015 in fact, to think differently about what the next phase of work and the next phase of conversation needs to be. And what I've been really um, pleased to be able to be putting, I suppose, my leadership and, and hope on is that we can actually have a process that is much more of a co-creation of policy rather than the model of government deciding and telling in that communication way that we sometimes call engagement that this is our policy. We're actually really trying to do a genuine co-creation of what the next phase of that no species loss strategy looks like. And I think that's a, an endeavour that, um, you know, we're learning as we're doing, but we're really focused on I suppose turning upside down that traditional way of making policy and, and evidence and the science basis of, of what we need to do there has been a really important part of framing that conversation. I think it's something that we'll continue to see dividends for and I hope many of you get involved in that conversation and that effort um, in coming days, months and weeks ahead. So I will just say now what Go to the bit of what do we need from you? What does South Australia need from you now at this time? We've gathered so many people here together 
There's going to be a thousand of you in the, walking the halls together in the coming, the coming days. What I think is that South Australia needs science, needs scientists, and we need scientists to deliver high quality science. And we need practitioners who can take that science and be agile in the face of an unpredictable future. There's this phrase that sort of says, the only certainty about the future is that it's uncertain. And so thinking about that frame and thinking about the challenges for NRM science, we need the ethics, we need your critical thinking, we need your curiosity, and we need your collaboration. South Australia needs the best available science and research to solve our future NRM challenges. The state's most valuable resource isn't actually found in the environment, it's found in all of you. And it's your ideas, your skills, your knowledge of NRM that can help ensure our state reaches its goals and targets. We can't really expect scientists anywhere else to worry about the flows of the Murray-Darling, although I do think they have a moral obligation to, but anyway. Um, and we do need to think about the state and our natural resources. There are some problems that are really just on us, the people in this room. And that fills me with great confidence because the commitment of this, the people in this room that I've already seen in play, I, I think that there's, there's no challenge that's going to be too big. And as chair of the NRM RAIN Steering Committee, I've been really excited and amazed by the work coming out of the NRM community in South Australia up to now, and I feel even more excited looking at the, the conversations that are set on the agenda for the days ahead. And I really do relish the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead for all of us. There's a lot of work to be done, but South Australia is asking the right questions, which I think is a really important first part. And we're using an exceptional platform this event, this really large conversation to come together and share what we've discovered so far. So it, it is a unique platform and I think a really unique opportunity and I'm so pleased that we've managed to get to this day. And the conference bringing NRM scientists, researchers and practitioners together. These things don't come about by accident. They're, it's no one's... Um, these things aren't easy to bring together, and especially because it's a, such a huge event, such a huge undertaking, and not anything that sits naturally with one person's job to do. And, and really, I think what you would see, what you will see over these coming days, is you need someone to pour their heart and soul into something like this to make it really work. And we've got one of those people in Jenny. <laughs> who's just gasped, by the way, for those of you at the back. Um, what I have seen over my time here is Jenny pouring her heart and soul, not only into this conference, but into the actual core concept that you do need to collaborate to get the best answers and that you need to put energy and commitment into bringing people from diverse backgrounds together. And so Jenny is actually the person who dreamt up even having this conference. She dreamt it up two years ago, which is like dreaming up, how could I make my working life really, really, really challenging? That's what she managed to do. And not only did she dream it up, but she managed to bring together all of the relationships with our state and our partners, all of you, to actually bring this together. So, Jenny, you're so well known and respected around the place, and, and in this room particularly, and your weekly updates on the NRM research are such a source of knowledge, and I know that people all over Australia are reading them as well as people in South Australia. The last one, I don't know if all of you know this, reached 15,000 people. And we know that people actually open it as well, because people can receive emails, but opening them and reading them is a whole other thing. And so, for all of you who don't know already, Jenny is the driving force behind this event, and on behalf of the NRM reigning Rain Steering Committee, I'd like to thank you, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 uh... <laughs> now, we've given that as a, both a gift and a survival pack to get her through the next few days because it takes a lot to get up to this line. <laughs> there is wine in there, and we'll bring it to you on demand. <laughs> But before I jump off the microphone and, and let you actually get to the core of the conference, I'd also like to recognise some more great collaboration that we're lucky enough to have in, 
in Juna, and that is the other Sandy, the scientist Sandy, um, in Sandy Carruthers. And she is responsible in Juna for the growth in our partnership. She has really focused in her leadership on how we can work with people, and hopefully many of you in this room have already had that experience of working with Sandy and seeing the way that things can be done in such excellent collaboration. And in my time in Juna, I have just been so impressed by the energy and efforts that Sandy puts into problem solving and working with people. And it's the exact model of leadership that I really respect and I'm so um, pleased to see in Sandy. So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank her for her work and her commitment and also wish her well in getting through the energy of the next couple of days because you've got that big speech at the end. 